Yes, that's right. We're back for another episode of Lions Den, connected by EE. -E. I'm your eyes and ears inside the camp at St George's Park, your host, Josh Denzel. And today, we're joined by a superstar, the main man. That's right. It's Mr Marcus Rashford. How you doing, brother? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You OK? It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Third good, one. Good. feel honoured. What we're going to do, we're going to do this a little bit differently. Yeah. We're going to start at the fan wall. All right, this is our EE fan wall. Okay. And we've got some huge fans, the fans of yours, fans of England. All right? And they're each going to ask you a question. Yeah. All right? So first off, I'm going to start with you, Steve. What's your question to Marcus? Hi, Marcus. Uh, nice to meet you. It's an honour. I was a Man United England fan. All the best for the tournament. Uh, and just quickly, mm -hmm. just thanks for all the work you're doing outside football. Uh, amazing. And uh, your MBE was uh, truly deserved. My question is, as a, as a football player, late in age as I am, but still play, I love a keepy up. <laughs> I love keepy ups. Yeah. And uh, I remember at the World Cup, uh, last World Cup, when you were doing the keepy ups around the uh, hotel grounds. Do you actually know how many you did? Because yeah. it seemed to go on forever and ever. And was that your world record? Um, no, it wasn't my record. When I was a kid, I used to, that's all I used to do, like keepy uppies. And I just used to go until like round and round the block uh, where we used to live so I don't think it's my record but I, I can't remember how many it was I think maybe England might have it on, on one of their clips <laughs> Roughly how many do you think you can do? Thousands? Yeah, thousands I don't, I don't, not, in the, not in them shoes Surely not Why are you trying to challenge <laughs> me now? <laughs> oh, all I'm saying is there's a ball there we might get back to it but Steve, I know, I know you, play, you play for the NHS Trust team you also coach for them tell us a little bit about that yeah, I, I, yeah I, run a, I work for the NHS. I'm actually in a vaccine centre as we speak uh, uh, on the Isle of Wight, so uh, that's all good. Yeah, I coach uh, some uh, coach a trust team. I've coached junior football. I do a bit of scouting, so uh, I might get Marcus a move if he wants one, but hopefully he won't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, just a football nut, uh, you know, uh, United fan, and hopefully uh, we can bring it home uh, this summer. 100% appreciate you, Steve. Thank you. Brian, my man, I know Hi. you've got a question for the main man, Marcus. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Marcus. Uh, I just wanted to uh, congratulate you on your new book. It's really amazing. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so I play disability football for a club called CP United, and I want to play for England in uh, the Paralympics. I was just wondering, what advice would you give to a young player that wants to play for his country? And also, what's the best advice you were given when you were a kid? I think, you know, a lot of young kids they don't they don't quite know what they want in what they want in in their lives. Um, so for you to have that vision and that dream already is is a big positive. And you know, the one the one bit of advice I'd give you is just don't give up. Um, keep going for it. Keep being the best that you can be, and that that will ultimately give you the best chance of of competing for England. Brian, that's a fantastic question. Thank We're going to come man. back to you guys on the, the EE fan wall in a bit, but Marcus, take a seat. Yeah. The Lions Den, this is my place, my palace, <laughs> it's my home. <laughs> and guys, oh. if you're watching on Twitch or on YouTube, make sure you get your comments in. We're going to try and get as many as we can on the screen right there. But how we work on Lions Den is every player that we get on, yeah. we get them to, to bring up a poll that the viewers at home can vote on. Right, okay. So I feel like you... And we're going to leave it to you, you know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to take okay, over. Okay, so my one would be, who do you guys think are the quickest out of three players in the squad? And the three players I'm going to choose are myself. You have to put yourself in there. Kyle Walker. Yeah. And, ooh, I'm going to go for Raheem Sterling. Oh, Raz, yeah? Yeah. All right, that's, that's three very, very quick players. But <laughs> Make sure you guys get your votes in, and at the end of the show, we'll reveal who wins. But first of all, congratulations. Thank Third you. tournament as a senior. Yeah. Still so young. Do you, do you see yourself as a, as a kind of senior member of the squad, even being young in age? Um, yeah, I think so. Because um, I believe the, the experiences that I've you know, been through with, with the national team and just in my career in general, um, everything happened very, very quickly. and. Because it happened so quickly, I learned a lot of things at a, at a young age. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I'm m one of the experienced ones, um, one of the ones that have played in, in big games. And 
what's different uh, about this squad now compared to when I first came through is that the young ones that are coming through have already been exposed to some of the biggest yeah. games in, in, in football. So um, for them to come and play in a national, it's, it's something that's going to be much easier for them to, for sure. for them to do. Um, and yeah, I'm just hoping that everyone fits in the squad nice because if we're, if we're going to win the tournament like, like what we want to do, then we're going we're gonna to need the whole, the whole squad. So um, yeah, hopefully we get the balance right. Um, and yeah, we, we do something special. For sure. And for me, kind of being in and around the squad for the last year or so, like there's a togetherness about it that it feels very, very real. And I know you came down for the camp in March. I think it was the Albania, Poland, mm. San Marino games. Kind of injured, knowing that you might not get on the pitch. Did you come down, I guess, because you knew how important it was to be with the squad and yeah. genuinely because you enjoy being in and around it? That was the last camp before this one, before this yeah. one yeah. Um, yeah, for me, it's it's been a difficult year with with injuries and stuff. And um, earlier on in the season, I missed out on camps, and um, I I hate missing missing being with yeah. with the team basically. And I felt like going into a major tournament, um, that camp before was in my in my eyes very very important. That I was there, even though I knew probably in the back of my head that I couldn't quite like I weren't ready to play the games. Um, just being around the lads and just doing normal stuff, what we do in, in the hotel that day to day, that was important to me because I know how much, you know, togetherness stands for really. I know how much it, it counts. Um, and definitely in this team, we have it in, in abundance. For sure. And I mean, you got to Captain England. I know that has been, I saw your brother's Instagram. I know it's been a dream of yours since the age of 10. Yeah. How did you feel when you found out and then again, how did you feel walking down the tunnel with the captain's armband on? Um, when I found out, I was buzzing. I was I was smiling. Um, I was very very happy and just proud really. Um, and it's to be fair, it's two different feelings because when you're actually leading the team out, you're thinking about winning. Yeah. So it's two different. You can't kind of internalize it. It's not no, about it's me. No, it's two about different emotions. So I think I enjoyed it earlier on and um, before the game. Like, like I said, I was happy, I was smiling. Um, I didn't actually tell anyone. You didn't tell anyone? Nah, I didn't tell anyone until after the game. How really? long was it before the game that you found out? Um, a few hours before, three hours before. But and I wanted it to be a surprise for yeah. you know, my, my brothers. and When you're the first man at the line. Stuff. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted them to, to be like, wow. So um, I never told any of them. And um, yeah, from, from when we get to the game, it's, it's just about the team then. And, and winning the, it's an important game, it's the last game before before the Euros and um, I think we won the last seven games, so to go into a tournament winning eight out of eight games of is massive for, for the team's confidence, so I knew that we had to, we had to win the game and, and thankfully we did. That's indicative of your character in general because I feel like in the most pressurised moments you're at your calmest, like from what I want to know and I'm sure what you guys at home want to know is like, how do you drown out the noise and how do you combat the nerves, if there are any nerves? Because like, you don't seem like someone who's faced. Um, I think the, the, the nerves is something that you deal with probably at a young age without you knowing. Yeah. Uh, for me, that was the case anyway, because I always remember this one game when I, when I was nervous um, and I just I couldn't perform. I couldn't play my, yeah. play my game and I wasn't happy on the pitch. So um, I had a conversation with my brother after that game and we just like agreed, no, don't be afraid to do things ever again in, in your career and um, that's just stuck with me so I don't really get the, get the nerves but drowning out the noise and uh, the distractions when you're in pressured situations, um, I think that's just you've got to go back to basics, you've got to do what you do every day at, at training um, when you're concentrated and it's the same as that just because there's you know, thousands and thousands of, of fans around the pitch. Technically, it's the same skills that you do on yeah. the training pitch, so that's, that's the way that I see it. Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, I mean, obviously, you're, you're well known both within football and outside of football for campaigning for social justice issues. But it must be a time, I've got, I've got to commend you for that as well. But it, I've, seen, I've seen the side of you that's also like, you're not afraid to rap along to the latest <laughs> little baby track. You're, like, yeah. you're, you're, not, you're not like, you know, you're ready to chill out. How do you spend your free time, uh, you know what I mean, both here and at home? Um, at home it's a little bit more 
more different because obviously in, in Manchester there's, there's um, like for me when I go out it's, it's a lot of a lot of hassle yeah. so um, here in camp it's yeah. been it's I was been about brilliant. to say there's like every every time I walk past there's this yeah. booming laugh going yeah. on everywhere it's crazy <laughs> no it's it's funny we're just having little competitions of each other and um, some there's a group that playing cards um, it's just it's just fun to be honest with yeah. you and um, do you know what? To be honest with you, not many people are staying in the rooms at the minute. I was, I was about to say, I, the people who come out and be like, yeah. I just finished a two on one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah, that's what I was doing just before we come out here, to be fair. That, that, might, that might bode you well for this <laughs> challenge, honestly. <laughs> but with that, obviously, we've, we've seen Mason Mount draining three pointers. We've seen Chile draining three pointers. But it wasn't quite the same for Jude Bellingham. If no. you, have, you, have you seen him play? Yeah, I've seen him play. I was, on, I was getting a. Uh, milkshake and me and Jaden was watching him and um, we weren't impressed. <laughs> the only thing I can give him is he's young, he's 17, he's, he's got a lot of time no, to learn. No, you can't say, you can't age him off. He got to, he's, he's got time to learn but Jude, the, 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 air, the air balls that Jude is throwing. No. <laughs> <laughs> sure, it's good because it, it, when, you, when you can see them, right, oh. it, you, you see this unbelievable shot because Mace came here yesterday, Yeah, he was draining three pointers. Right, he stayed for about an hour afterwards. Yeah, and he was yeah. just playing. <laughs> Tom, unbelievable. He might as well have been dunking in there. And then, then we see this. So, do you know what? It's just because you're good at one sport doesn't necessarily mean you're uh. good at every single sport. But with that, this is a new segment. Okay, that I've invented. I, I thought of it last night. I was. It came as a brainwave. Yeah. And you're going to be the first person to get involved in it. Nice. It's something that I call camp life. Okay. Because the people at home, they're very interested in what's going on. They don't get to hear or see this every single day. Yeah. So I'm going to just try and get a, like, a little insight into the squad here. Okay. Okay. First question, it's, it's not a time thing. You know what I mean? So whatever you want to do. Has anyone in the squad got a hidden talent? Hidden talent? Hmm. Hidden talent. Because I've seen Hendo doing a bit of singing. So, so yeah, there's a, there's a few that can sing. Who got, I just who think got the vocals? Some of them that... Sorry. F forget the singing, but... <laughs> Some of them at golf are unbelievable. I mean, we, we've seen Harry Kane walking around the golf course. No, but, but it's, it, who, who for me, is? for me, it's like, they look professional. <laughs> <laughs> like they hit every ball perfect, like. Are you, are you, are you not a golf man? No, no, I can't play golf. That's why I think it's so sick. <laughs> <laughs> they might not even be playing very well. And you're like, oh, I can't believe it. Uh, Jordan Pickford was, he hit about 10 balls just Straight on, the, on the simulator. Yeah. Bam, 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 10 times in a row. I was like, oh my God. I tried to hit one and <laughs> slice to the right. You better watch the windows, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of them are good at, are good at golf. And good at a, golf. There's a few singers as a well. A few singers. Could you, could you name, can you give us, could you give us a singer? A singer? Because we might, we might get them online then and we might do a little karaoke segment. Who was, did Raz do a little bit the other day? Oh, Raz, Raz was singing was a bit right? of uh, Egyptian. Was it? Girl, let me hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do that's it. What, that's what he listens to, though. <laughs> no, Raz, Raz is all right. All right, fair play. If there was an England basketball draft, yeah. Who's getting picked first? Ooh. For me? Yeah. Tyrone Mings. Mings, are, yeah? Yeah. Has he got a bit? He's got a bit, plus he's massive, so. That does help. It helps. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, who's getting picked last in the England basketball draft? Saka. Oh, he loves it, though. Yeah, no, he likes it, he enjoys it, but. He, Worse than Jude Do you know what he is? He's a rebounder. He only okay, scores, right, he yeah, only scores rebounds. Up, plays off the big man up yeah, top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He only scores rebounds, but anything. Out of that area, like he doesn't have a chance. Little, you know, we got to give it. To him. Right, fair play. If your ideal gaming partner, so if you're on PlayStation, you're on the Xbox or whatever. Yeah. First of all, for Warzone, Warzone, Warzone. Yeah. Next Fortnite, and then FIFA. I could probably only answer for Warzone and FIFA. I don't play um. Fortnite. Fortnite. It's, it's too confusing, I don't. But there's a f there's a few. I'm gonna pick two. All right. For Warzone, me. um, Luke Shaw. He's got the headset and all the setup ready. The show is ridiculous. Like, I try not to even play with him because he takes all my kills and <laughs> so you're, yeah. Do you, know what I mean? you make me look bad. Yeah, he's making me, yeah. So Luke Shaw and Mason Mount I've heard is very, very good. Alright, um, okay, then FIFA. FIFA. Um Sanch is good. He's beat me a few times. <laughs> um He loves to put it on the socials as well. Raheem. Raheem, yeah. Okay, so Sancho and Raheem, I like this. this. We could get a nice little eSports squad together. <laughs> I feel like maybe we, can, maybe we can do something with this. All right, next one is the sorest loser. Who just doesn't like losing? Who, who talks about it forever and then? 
to be honest, I think all of us are sort of losers. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just part of being a footballer that like you don't, you don't like, no, no one likes to lose. Um, but give me the sorest winner. Like, who doesn't let you forget that they beat you at something? Sanch. Sanch, yeah. Yeah. If he beats you. That was straight away. Yeah, because if he beats you, he's going to talk until you beat him. Okay, fair. So, but it's hard to beat him because obviously he's quite good. Yeah, at FIFA, he's all right. Cod, is, Cod Sanch is all right as well, but basketball can beat him. All right, so you just got you got to find his weakness. That's yeah, what you got you to pick. You got to pick. And then you got to give it back to him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair play. Who's the teacher's pet? Teacher's pet. Yeah. Who's like first at training? You know, like doing the warm ups and that, like doing extras. I think, to be fair, I think everyone does yeah. does extras anyway. I don't. We all usually walk down together. Yeah. Um, then we're all in the gym before training, and then just straight onto the pitch. So it's quite. Um, it's quite laid back and like independent. So, yeah. so you you choose to work hard and then you obviously take that yeah, upon but that's yourself, the, that responsibility, and you do it. Yeah, exactly. And that's the environment that the manager set for us. Um, he allowed us to be um, like individuals and like in a way do what we want. But things like out for training, yeah. don't be late for training, yeah. like the basic stuff. Um, don't be late for the gym, um, like meetings and stuff like that. But Everyone's pretty. I think that's key. I think it's point, that freedom yeah. outside of you. Know you're going to work hard. You know you're going to do the extras. But beyond that, like you've got to be a group. Like you've yeah. got to be a team. You've got to have fun together. And it's that bond that when you're on the pitch, it means obviously you, as, as a base level, you desperately want to win for your country. But then when you want to win for each other as well, it's unstoppable. Yeah, to support each other is the the biggest thing. And England in the past maybe didn't didn't have it as well as what we've got it now. Um, but at the end of the day, we've got an opportunity to, to do something great and you wouldn't want something as small as getting to know someone exactly. to, to get in the way of that. So, um, like everyone, it's like one family in there, like everyone's playing, <laughs> everyone's with different people every day. Like yeah. it's, it's just, it's a bit crazy. It's, it sounds, mate, like, see, I see by your face, like I see by the, the atmosphere, <laughs> everyone who comes on, like it's, it's a wicked group. But yeah. who are you not? I've seen the jukebox in there, yeah? It goes very loud. Yeah. It's a particular choice of music. But who are you not letting anywhere near it? Who are you not letting be in the DJ? It's a tough question, this. I'm going to have to pick one of the young ones because the jukebox has got a lot of old music on it, so okay. I feel like they won't know which ones to pick. So Jude's the youngest in the squad, isn't it? Yeah. So Jude's got a... He's got to go. I love it. You're, you're talking like you're an old head. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, ah, these young boys. He's about five years younger than you. It's outrageous. Making me feel like... <laughs> All right, so no Jew, because he'd just be playing Dua like, Lipa, like, all yeah. of the latest release from, yeah, from Sombra. it'll be a bit mad. <laughs> is, there, is there a team anthem yet? Because like, is there like yeah. one song that gets all the boys hyped that you play before training or Nah, so there's probably a group of us, maybe yeah. like 10, that are on Little Baby and Dirk's new album. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not sure what the one song is. So the way we do it, yeah, like everybody picks one song all right. and they put it onto a playlist and then before the game, that's what gets that's played. The, okay. Um, so it's quite a good, it's a nice vibe in the changing room, like there's a bit of everything in there, so. I was about to say, you're not, you're not like getting ready for a game like, and you've got a little baby on and then so, <laughs> suddenly. Do you know what, I, it depends, like, if, if I'm not really feeling the music that's, yeah. that's on, then I'll just put my you're headphones in. Yeah, I guess you can yeah. just jump in and out of it. Um, but it's, to be honest, it's quite nice for a, a bit of a mix to be in there. Yeah. We saw Saka's passport prank. <laughs> he, he, he was he was here the day before you lot, so he was coming out and he was asking for the passport, and obviously the guys here already had him. Yeah. Has there been any other like mischief going on like that? Um. <laughs> no, you have to. Yeah, I think, that, that's that I giggle think, tells me there's something going on. No, no, on. there's something that's gonna happen. Um. Okay, this is live because so I, I, I don't want to ruin the surprise. Yeah. No, the per the people know it's going to happen. Okay, well, tell we just, me, God, we just give don't it know when. So today there was a we had a water balloon fight <laughs> after what? training because we was doing recovery. Yeah, yeah. And then I think some of the staff they, they pumped up some of that, <laughs> <laughs> and so people are just getting hit left right. So and wait, center. so the staff left it out for you? Yeah, or was it staff surface. versus players? No, no, no. They just left it out in the pool. So it was a free for all. Yeah, it was a free for all. <laughs> Who won? Or was it just one? Also, one? Dean Henderson lost. He got, he's he got, a goalkeeper. He's I know, but he got ambushed. Off. He got ambushed. Who was, who was the team ambushing? Him? Everybody. There was about, <laughs> Not even just three people. There was about Everybody. 15 people in the pool. And obviously Dean's come in, one's hit him. So he's just, he didn't know what to do. <laughs> he's just jumped into the pool. So his full body's gone under the water. His head come up. <laughs> 
still just water balloons going flying past his head, but um, yeah, that's not what I'm talking about though. Somebody okay. hit Jack Grealish um, oh, no. when he wasn't expecting it. Oh, is he fuming? He's not fuming, he's just, he wants to get him back. Okay, right, so there's gonna, there's gonna be some <laughs> yeah. revenge. But I'll let you know we... when, I, when I find out. Yeah, yeah you know what, I, I wanna see it on the socials. <laughs> before we get into that, I wanna talk about the call up. But before that, guys, we've got a special guest. It's Wretch Free 2. When it's all said and done, I hope we can say we've done enough. Compose when we're on the pitch, show your brother love. On the field, we're a family, every one of us. Hence why we take one knee after we huddle up. Sterling's still worth his weight in gold just to sum it up. Rashford ain't running on the wing to be runner up. A squad of 26 is what stands between the cup and us. Now we know the nation has the courage to encourage us. Wretch, Marcus, Marcus, Wretch. You you, you know each other already. Yeah, he's the GOAT, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's up? How you doing? Bro? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Just resting up now, getting ready for the first game. Wicked, wicked, wicked. Yeah. Wretch, it's, it's almost like you got the call up yourself and you delivered straight off the bat. <laughs> bro, it hurt so bad that I couldn't say my own name. <laughs> nah, <laughs> It's like, like when you're, um, I'm, I'm just, I'm just always up for a challenge, man. When it's especially an artistic one. So with something like that, for me, it's like, how can I mix talking about football and make it sound like it's a normal song, but at the same time, still keep everyone excited and get the names in as well. So it's just, it's just a good challenge to be able to do, man. So I love doing stuff like that. Hundred percent. I know. Obviously, the man next to me got a mention is uh, Rashford <laughs> ain't running on the wing to be a runner-up. How did, how did these bars come to you? Boy, in the studio. Um, and just like, like, I know who I want to mention. You get what I'm saying? And it's just how can I, where to put them in. But then it was also like, obviously, with something like that, there's a bit of a criteria where it's like, we need that mention, that needs to be mentioned, that needs to be mentioned. So it's just trying to find the right timing and obviously you want it to build towards the end as well so that's when I start reeling off Sterling and Rashford and you know what I mean <laughs> 100% I know you're you're an Arsenal fan you grew up in Tottenham your hero was Ian Wright so I know it, it's always a, a little bit techy these times so how nice is it when the country is united behind the England squad it is, it's different yeah yeah Bro, it's better man because it's like leave it's almost like, not leave the premiership at the door, but it's like, leave that confrontation at the door and, and now we're the dream team. Do you get what I mean? And, and now we're all, we've all, we're all on the same page and it's, and it's a common goal, but it's good, man. Because I know, like, like I, can, I can only imagine, like, for you lot, Marcus, and that, like, being competitors, it's like, you might have played against each other on Saturday, yeah. but then Monday they might be training. So it's like, <laughs> I can now it's it something, is, it's good that it's something that just you, we had to work on. Yeah. Like we had to work on it. But I'd say for the past like two, three years, it's like people would never understand how good of an atmosphere it is yeah. in there. Like the environment's perfect for a team that's gonna go and win things. So that's the first thing that Gareth had to put right and he'd done it straight away the first time he came in. Um like we all agreed like we can be battling against each other on Saturday, like what you said. But on Monday when we come together, we're now England and we're we won basically. Um and I think it's needed to go and win a big tournament like against other great nations with great players. Y you have to have that bond and, and togetherness like what we spoke about before. And this isn't these aren't like just your average Saturday games sometimes. This Champions League finals, yeah. this Europa League finals, this is they, these are huge games as well. So it's it's testament to you guys relationship here that you yeah. can just put that at the door we're here for a common goal but Rich, what I want to know from you is what's your what's your usual match day routine have you got like a specific thing you got to do I know certain people go to the same cafe the same pub you know what if I'm honest bro yeah I'm mad last minute <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like I might just, I might get a call and it's like yeah you want to go to the game and it's like I've got an hour and a half, then I quickly go and grab my son. So it's like, I'm always coming from somewhere else. So there ain't no routine. I think I think the only routine is that it's last minute. <laughs> All right, fair enough, I'll take that. Have you ever had to catch a game where like you're on tour or you're in somewhere crazy and you're watching it on your phone before you go on stage or something like that? Bro, I, 
I'm, I'm proper trying to remember the game, yeah? But there was an England match, yeah? And I was on tour, yeah? And I remember coming off at the, as, as, at the encore. So, you know, we pretend we're finished, innit? So, we've got two more songs to do. <laughs> like, well, we're, we're, we're leaving, then we're coming right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I got my inners in, so I whip out my inners. I'm like, yo, yo, what's the score? <laughs> <laughs> But I know I've got to run back out. So who scored? Is it? All right, cool. <laughs> and then run back out. That was the probably the point. And then I think Is when I'm... I came out, I told them as well, because obviously everyone, it was in England as well. <laughs> I just, I've, I've been with Marcus in Miami. He's got Meek Mill one side of him asking for pictures. He's obviously signed to Rock Nation as Jay-Z. Why is music and football so synonymous? I guess, like, growing up, most of the rappers wanted to be a football and i don't know i don't know if it's the same balance on the other side but i know that a lot of us had dreams of playing on the pitch first and then for whatever reason it didn't materialize <laughs> and now we're here kind of thing. so I, I don't know if it's the same the other way around but we've just got a proper as musicians we've just got a proper love and respect for the craft man i think for us it's like a lot of musicians, they, they rap about their lives and yeah. um, for me, it's that they're expressing themselves through art basically and um, like it's refreshing. For sure. I just, I, I enjoy pe listening to about people's journeys and you know, where they come from, how their upbringing was, what they dream, what they want to become. Um, and yeah, it's, it's just fun for me, like in my spare time, I always have music on, like whatever I'm doing, I'll always have have music on. It's like a little comfort thing, and um, yeah, I like to listen to a bit of a bit of everything, a bit of everyone. A bit of an eclectic music taste, that's for sure. And I know, obviously, that you shouted out Marcus in your song Three Minute Silence." How how important is it? Wait for that to go a little bit. How this is what happens with, with, with live shows. <laughs> obviously, how important is it for? musicians and footballers and sports people in general to have a voice on social justice issues yeah for me it's it's massively important um we both both have big platforms um people listen to us and we can influence the the next generation so i feel like if if we if there is something going on and you feel like you can help you know, spread that message on your platforms and more people will, will get to read it and maybe you'll teach more people about it as well, so more change will, will happen. For sure. Rich? Yeah, and it's, it's similar for me, man. And and also it's like, I feel it's, it's, it was important for me to mention Rashford in, 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 the, in the record because, like, I need people to know that with what he's doing, I can tweet and let you know I'm behind him and I can post and we can have our private conversations and it can be well done, bro. But everyone needs to know that I'm respecting and admiring and, you know what I mean, and, and sharing you on with what you're doing outside of football as well as in football. So it's, it's always key that they know that there's a big form of togetherness. 100%. And Marcus, I know you're part of Hope United, which is you know a team of top footballers from home nations basically providing, allowing to provide like digital skills to stop online abuse. You're someone who's spoken about it uh, a lot, but kind of when you're back in the players leading roles in, in the Hope campaign, why is it important to you? Because I feel like it's, don't get me wrong, social media is a, can be a great place, um, but at times, and there's been loads of examples, it gets outshadowed by negative people spreading negative messages. Um, it's something that I believe the platforms can do more to stop. Um, definitely, I think there needs to be bigger sanctions in place for, for people that do spread negative messages because at the end of the day, there's kids on there. They shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be seeing or hearing things that, you know, it's like me, if I had a kid, I wouldn't start saying stuff and for sure. um, showing him stuff that I wouldn't want him to do. Um, so for me, that th 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 there has to be a better way for us to, to stop it, and you know, hopefully through this through this uh, campaign, we can find find out what that way is. Um, and yeah, that's that's got to be the way forward. Firstly, for both of you, obviously, you both have big profiles, big profiles. 
how do you deal with the online hate? Like, have you got a specific way? Do you, is, it, is it like a, do you just ignore it? Do you kind of fight back to it or do you report it? What, what's kind of your general go-to? Um, for me, I'm, I'm not like on social media like 24 hours of a day. Like, I might go on it when I need to post. Um, but saying that, I, I very rarely make posts. I have a, you know, like a social media team and I don't know, that's just what's right so for you, me. So you kind of distance yourself yeah. from it. But this has been day. like from years and years ago. Yeah. Um, just because I think when you're young, you tend to be on it a little bit more. Um, and when I was on it, I was seeing it. Yeah. And then it might put, put you down for like an hour or something. But then, you know, you, you think about it and like, you, you, these people don't know you and you don't know them. So exactly. then you move on with it. Um, but yeah, just from, from young really, I just decided to, like it wasn't really for me. If social media is going to be like that, then it's not for it's not for me. For sure. And wretch yourself, are you? What? How do you deal with like the online bullying, the online trolling? Have you have you received any of that? I'm like I'm I'm one of them post and go. So I don't really like the, the, I, I, if I've created a body of work or I've created a song. Like I do like getting feedback, but I kind of don't. I don't really look in the comments if that makes any sense. So it's like, um, and then I guess over the years, like in terms of like abuse or negativity, it's like you slightly just become desensitized to it. You know what I mean? But just like with, um, with what Marcus is saying as well, it's like what, what, what these companies have to look at is we're on a working, it's a business, it's a workplace, even though it is, it is, it has a, a fun element to it. Like someone like myself, you guys, you know, you're, you're here to promote things when you're doing things. So it's a workplace. So if we all worked in a building and we'd done a presentation about something, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be allowed that everyone can just run in and just start saying loads of negative stuff, calling you all the time, all the other names under the sun. And do you know what I mean? That wouldn't be allowed. So it would be, it would be policed. It would be, you know, so why is it not the same online? For sure, I'm that. coming to work oh. and you know, receiving abuse. A hundred percent. And even, even, even for me in, in that sense, like you, when you're talking about becoming desensitized, like sometimes you get it so much that it, it's, it's, it's crazy to think that abuse wouldn't affect you as much because you receive so much of it, but then you do end up, okay, cool. Can I block keywords? Can I do so? Can I take certain steps to, to do it? Like maybe have a social media marketing manager or block negative hate words, etc., or block people. And that's it. And if you guys at home really want to know more about BT's campaign, please search hope United. Rich, what else you got coming up? Um, more music, of course. Um, put out a little project, um, just to just to feed the fans, and then yeah, man, working on the album, man. I'm nearly done, so yeah, summer's gonna be summer. Hundred <laughs> percent. Well, we look forward. We look forward to the music, and we look forward to uh, watching all the games. I'm sure. Enjoy, Rich. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate nice you. Nice to meet you, bro. Uh, Marcus, man. Let's, Marcus, uh, let's take it back to the fan wall. Yeah. Let's jump in. Ooh. These guys have been patiently waiting. Huge, huge fans. First of all, we're going to come to you. Samir, what's your question for Marcus? You right, Marcus? You all right, Josh? I'm yeah. good, I'm good. Yeah, firstly, I just want to say that I'm a huge United fan. And Marcus, you're doing a great job with all the charity work and with your new book as well. I even have my own copy and I have to say it's an inspirational read so far. <laughs> So yeah, my you. question for you is, what is the fondest memory that you have of watching England play as a child and fan growing up? Um, I remember watching Wayne Rooney when he was, I think, 18 years old at the time, um, playing his, his first Euro. Euro 2004? Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, and yeah, he was, he was obviously one of my favourite players already. Um, and just watching him go there and express himself, play freely. It's, it's what, you know, at United, it's what they tell you football is about, go on the pitch to express yourself and, you know, things outside of the sport, like whether it's anger or um, anxiety, whatever you're dealing with off the pitch, when you get on the pitch, let it all out. Um, and yeah, for me to see him perform like that, that was, that was one of my favourite individual, you know, performances. And, in, uh, in over a few games in, in an England shirt. I want to Appreciate see you We're going <laughs> to come to you now, Brogan. What's your question for Marcus? 
Hiya, Marcus. You all right? Hi, mate. Um, what what I want to ask you is, um, obviously you're a you're a um a great role model to all the young the young lads and young girls in in the country, including myself, who's still trying to make his way in the game, who's been in the academy system and that, and it takes a lot of hard work. But what I want to know is, as a as a young lad, who inspired you both on and off the pitch, and also who inspires you today? Um, probably my when I was younger, my biggest inspirations was um, Wayne Rooney, um, Cristiano Ronaldo, and it was purely based off the fact that I I was obviously lucky enough to get the opportunity to. You know, sometimes bump into them in in the corridor when when they was in the building. Um, watch them train sometimes, um, and I could just see two young two young players that had enormous talent. Um, and then over the years, just watching them at Old Trafford, they grew into into animals and um, you know just world class players. And um, whilst they was on their journey, it just drives you every day to whatever you thought was good. You have to do better than that, um, and yeah, that was just my mentality, and still is my mentality today. Um, but it's thanks to to those guys that that my my brain works in that way. Um, so yeah, them two were were definitely my my idols. Appreciate you, Rogan. Andy, coming to you. Hi, Marcus. Um, just to echo everyone's comments, you're an absolute inspiration on and off the field, and as a huge United fan, I'm. Uh, I'm in awe of how you play the game and just, just seem to love the game. So, um, so thank you. Thank you. Um, my question to you is, if you could add a player into the current squad from any England team of the past, i.e. retired, Ooh. who would it be and why? Tough one. Any England team in the past? Yeah, any player from any England team in the past. Got some legends in there. It's too many to, to pick from. <laughs> it's so tough, isn't it? Oh, one player. You've got the Gazzas, you've got the Rudys, got the Barnes. Beckham. Beckham. Terry, Ferdinand. Goals. Skulls. Just trying to think for our team now. What would for be your team, yeah. What would make your team better? <laughs> this is tough. have to give you do you know what with the because we've had a few problems at centre back injuries and stuff so I'm going to go for a centre back centre back um, this, this, this is, this is going to cause some problems here is it going to be <laughs> Ferdinand Terry this, this yeah, maybe that's biased, a great centre I'm off. biased towards Ferdinand no, uh, uh, you know what listen I'm not going to I'm not going to blame you I'm going to choose Ferdinand player. yeah he Rio. is a top player yeah alright fair play before, before, before it gets too tense <laughs> right I'm going to move on to you Hassan <laughs> what's your question for Marcus <laughs> Hi Marcus. You okay, bro. Well, I should probably say Marcus Rashford and be you, right? We have to put some respect on your name. <laughs> oh, what happened to the full title, yeah? One hundred percent. Me myself, I work for BT's Forty Three Squad, so we do a lot of work with grassroots football, women's football, and parent disabilities. And over the last few years, with all the lockdowns we've had, um, a lot of people have been struggling, and a lot of focus has been placed on mental health within all aspects of sport and just general life. How do you look after your mental health, especially with all the added pressure of the nation behind you? I'm assuming it can't be easy, right? Um, I think for me, like mental state's been something that I've, without me knowing, I've been working on it for years, like since I was a kid, because um, I've had a few members in my family that have struggled with, with mental health. Um, so as a kid, I sort of know the do's and don'ts. Like if you are feeling a little bit um, down or whatever, do, just do something that makes you happy. It's as simple as that. And for me, I, I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to just play football every day. So it's very difficult for me to get into that um, that frame of mind where I'm like down and upset because you know the next day I'll have training or a game, so um, I'm happy again. Um, so yeah, for me, it's 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 something that's massive in in football, um, in sports, and it's something that I feel like in the last maybe a few years we've we've took more steps towards helping people that do struggle with them things i think that in the future um you'll get more players that are opening up about it um 
because I think it's, it's definitely beneficial when you start to speak to somebody about it, you, you'll feel a lot better about yourself. Um, so yeah, hopefully in the next few years that can that can start to happen and more people can get help. 100%. Fantastic 100%. questions, guys. Thank you. Marcus, it's all on you now because you've yeah. got to pick your favourite questions. Let me remind you, we've got Steve, we've yeah. got Brian, we've got Samir, we've got Brogan, Andy and Hassan. What was your favourite question? I think there was all great questions, um, but I'm going to pick um, Brian. Brian. Top Brian. Brian. Congratulations, Marcus is going to challenge for you in the Lions 10 challenge, right? So what's going to happen is, yeah. right, you're going to go over there, you're going okay. to get warmed up. You might, listen, I don't know, we don't have any basketball shoes for you, so you're going to have to work out. But you go over yeah, there. Yeah, will be fine. Take, you know, take a few shots. Okay. Right, and I'll explain Practice. to the people what's going on. Okay. All right? Guys, this is the Lions 10 challenge. If you don't already know, I don't know where you've been. But essentially, Marcus has 10 balls. Each ball is worth one point. Okay? If he gets it in the hoop. There is a golden ball, and that ball is worth three points. If he scores two points, he's going to win Brian a signed ball. If he scores four points, oof, he's going to win Brian a signed shirt. And if he sinks the golden ball, it's going to be entered into the EE match day prize draw. So come with me, guys. Come on, let's go. Let's go see the court. This is a regulation size hoop. Regular, I can tell you that everything. This, you know. Do you know what? I, don't, don't start coming onto my court. No, seriously, I think it's Marcus. high. Don't, don't. I think it's high. It, it is about three... three feet higher than a normal hoop. Is it? I'm not going to lie to okay. you. Right, do you know the rules? Let me, let me explain them to you again. Oh, that's, that's light. That's easy. What you got to do, each ball yeah. is worth one point. Okay. Okay, there's a maximum, there's 10 balls. Yeah. There's a maximum points tally of 13. Yeah. For every ball you sink, it's one point, apart from the golden ball, which three is three points. points. Okay? okay? To win Brian, a signed ball, you need to sink two. Yeah. Okay? To win him a signed shirt, you need to sink four. Okay. And if you sink the golden ball, he's going to be entered in to the EE match day prize draw. We can win a massive EE bundle. Okay, I'm going to do my, my best for him. <laughs> I, feel, I feel confident. How is your basketball skills? I don't know. You I'm, don't know. To, I'm good in there, but like I said, it's a different... Do you know what? I'm going to give you one practice go. Okay. Yeah? And I'm just gonna, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna test it out to see what's... Uh, you don't, I should never, you know what, I'm going to count that. You know, I feel like... Does that count? Is I feel that, like the energy's like, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. There's, there's no wind blowing, right? So that, that's one. You've got eight to beat. DCL was okay. on fire. He was moving like Steph Curry. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay. Marcus, Two. this is outrageous. All right, that's already the sign ball. <laughs> Brian's win. Uh, hey, come on. I, I want three on the bounce. Let's go. Oh! oh. I, I, you, can't, you can't get much closer than that. God, two out of three. Can't complain. Here we go. Oh, he's. Oh. You know what? Hey, we're still on two, but we got. Okay. We got enough. You know what? Yo, get rid of that, that, that. You know what that is? Yeah, it's bad luck that one. Terrible. We don't need that one. It's bad luck. It's bad That's energy. Fun. Here we go. Oh, it's off point. It's off point. It's I didn't off see point. that one. I didn't see that one. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Two out of four. Two out of four. All we need is two more to get the signed shirt. Yeah. Marcus, I got faith. I've got faith. See that? Oh! It, you can't get much closer than this. <laughs> you can't. Two out of five. Uh, you know what? If you get five... Here we go. Here we go. Uh, you can't write it. I think I've lost my You can't write it. Do you want a little, do you want a little time out? Just a little... Wait. Just no ball. Yeah, yeah? Just loosen up the shoulder. It's beautiful. There we go. Look at the art. There you go. Boom. Five down. <sighs> There you go. It's Oi. back. It's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. How is it? How's it feeling? It's feeling it's good. good. It's good. It's good. Yeah. Excellent. Three so out of six. I like the way you keep the same ball. It's good energy. Three out of six. Let's go. It's back. Oh, I told it's you back. It's is back. that the signed I shirt? I told you. <laughs> is that the signed shirt and the signed ball? I feel like we might need to. You know what? I feel like a ball boy right now. But four out of what, what is it? Four out of seven. Seven. Four out of seven. Eight. Four out of eight. Four out of eight. But we still got the money ball to play. We still got the money ball to play. Do you know what? That's going, that, that's going away. <laughs> just, just the money ball to go. But listen, this. No, three I've got points. one more. I've got one more. Four out of nine. I don't know if Mark no. is making up his own rules here. Four out of nine. Four out of nine. Go on, two to play. I'm not sure DCL is going to be too happy with it. Should have wore trainers. Yeah, I mean, you, you are in the house slippers. Oh! <laughs> Do you know what? You, can, you, can, you can't beat DCL's score. No, it's OK. This is three points, and to be entered into the EE match day prize draw, this is the money ball. Yeah. This is where it happens. It's LeBron James. Steph Curry. 
<laughs> sorry. All right, no more whispering on set. I'm sorry. All right, no more whispering. All right. <laughs> All right, here we go. There we go. Myself. It's grass. It's, in, thinking it's too in much. my way. I thought you said you don't get nervous. I don't, man. I'm just concentrating. I told you. Oh I told you. Oi. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. Sink the money ball. Brian has been entered. Go on, you know, you know what? Where's, where's the money ball? <laughs> Give me the money ball. Give me the money ball right now. Are you going to have a go? No, absolutely not. I, I just know. You can teach me afterwards. You bring that. Come over yeah. here. Unbelievable effort. Sinking the money ball in the final shot. Yeah. That's clutch. Exactly. That's clutch. What can I say? You know what? You stay there, because yeah. everyone who comes on the show, you might have got your special commemorative tournament caps from yeah. Gareth, but when you come here, you get the Lion's Den cap. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One I of like three. That. I like that. One of three. Backwards or forwards? Whichever way suits you best. That's all I'm saying. Just change the, the head size. It's unbelievable. I can't believe it. You're still behind. You're, you're one behind DCL on the leaderboard. Okay. When, I, when I come back, I'll, I'll, I'll knock them off, off his spot. All right, do you know what? You can come back at any point. Yeah. Practice. This is, this is obviously my court. It's my place. This is Lion's Den. OK. All right. You're one behind DCL, but we can come back and make it happen. Yeah. We've still got to get... Hang on, I'm still in my ear, because we're going to have to get the poll results of the fastest oh, player, because yeah. you're still in there. It could be two wins. I don't think I'm going to win. And we're getting in. So, Sterling in third place with 7% of the vote. OK. And in second place, we have Walker. Oh, we. No. Oh, no, we don't. I'm sorry. I feel like Steve Harvey. I've said, it's, <laughs> it's Rashford in second place with 34%. Yeah. And running away with it is Carl Walker with 59%. Yeah, Do you know what? I think that's fair. You come second twice today, but yeah. it's not the money ball clutch player. Yeah. Guys, that's it from us. Lions Den. We're going to be back tomorrow, same time. Make sure you stay tuned.